Hey friends, we are in day 18. We're really diving into this forgiving thing pretty hard. Today we're, our, our foundation scripture is Matthew 5, 44. Look your enemies, excuse me, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So every day this challenge builds and it builds and it builds and it builds and it gets a little tougher every day, doesn't it? So here we go. Maybe you've heard this phrase. Do not hate your enemies. Instead, pray for your enemies because it's super passive aggressive and will totally tick them off. Matter of fact, that was a sign out here on our electric sign at one point. While this is funny, it's not why we pray for or love our enemies. We don't do it to make them feel worse. We do it because we want them to live like Jesus. Jesus calls us to a lifestyle that might seem weird to the rest of the world. It's weird to say, I'm going to love my enemies and pray for them. It's even weird to actually do it. The word say, excuse me, the world says to hate our enemies or seek revenge on them. Jesus is calling us to do the opposite. Pastor Zach says, during seminary, I was blessed to lead a college ministry at St. Louis University. We had worship service on a Saturday evening, and one night I preached a sermon I felt really, really good about. We had a packed house, the energy was high, and I was passionate about my talking topic. Five different seminary professors were there. It was unusual to have a professor or two, and it, it wasn't unusual to have a professor or two in attendance, but this was a few more than normal. I was proud because I knew I had just preached one of my best sermons ever, or so I thought. Two weeks later, my supervisor called me in the office, and one of my professors who had been at the service was there to talk to me about my sermon. I thought, great, he must have really liked it. Maybe he wants me to preach it somewhere else. Nope, he hated it. While he talked, he criticized my the theology, claimed there was no gospel in it, and called my performance narcissistic. He didn't think I was fit to be a pastor and required me to take an additional law and gospel class at seminary. After the conversation, I figured it would just go away, but it didn't. The professor wanted me to make an example out of me. My other professors told me to cooperate and not make a big deal out of it. But I held a grudge against this professor for a long time. I didn't understand why he was trying to make my life at the seminary experience so miserable. I didn't understand why, and to be honest, I still don't. This is the guy Jesus wants me to pray for. You may have enemies in your life. Some of them may have been much more serious than what I described, and you may wonder, why does Jesus want me to pray for my enemies? In Christ, we are not to be people of vengeance and bitterness. We are to be people of forgiveness. When you hold grudges or seek revenge, you are not acting like Christ. I'm not saying it's easy or that you won't have to wrestle with things, but ultimately God wants us to have a heart of forgiveness. And if you pray for your enemies, you are on the right path. Time and time again, Jesus prayed for his enemies. He often offered a prayer at his crucifixion. And hear what Jesus has to say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. In the midst of death and betrayal, Jesus still prayed for his enemies. That's amazing. And if you don't think it's possible for us to do the same, take a look at the Apostle Stephen. His story is found in Acts chapter 6 and 7. After Jesus testifies of Jesus, excuse me, after Stephen testifies of Jesus' love and grace for the world, the crowd stones him to death. Before he dies, he falls on his knees and says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. I know it's hard to pray for your enemies. You will need strength and power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do it. If you're having a hard time with this, invite the Holy Spirit into your heart today. And here's our big, hairy, audacious quote of the day right here. In Christ, we are not to be people of vengeance and bitterness. Amen. It's not our cup of tea. And so we're going to read that chapter about Stephen here in a minute. Acts chapter 7, verses 54 through 60. If you have your book, it's on page 118. If you don't, I encourage you to get your Bible out and get into the Word of God and let's read together. Pastor Zach says, Notice in this passage how Stephen, just like Jesus, had the power to pray for his enemies in the midst of dying. So here we go. Acts chapter 7, 54 through 60. 
When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw in the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I've seen heaven open to the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. As this, they covered their ears, yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at his feet of the young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, free, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. So our challenge today, friends, is to pray for those who have hurt you, abused you, or become your enemies. This isn't easy to do, but God will use it to transform your heart. You've seen plenty of demonstrations in books and stories on the news, people's kids being murdered, abused, taken, abducted, put on the slave market, sex slave market. The list goes on and on and on. You, this stuff happens every day, especially here in St. Louis. I mean, there's always tragedy every night. Turn on the news. If it reads, it bleeds. Or excuse me, if it bleeds, it reads. It's just everywhere in the paper. It's all over everywhere. Ugliness, hatred, so much justification to not like people, to hate people even. But it's poison, and we can't afford to have it, even if it lands on our own doorstep. We can't afford to have it. We have to let it go. But we need God's help to do that. And we need our friends in the kingdom to do that. We need people that we can be honest with, that we can be transparent with, that we can say, you know, this sucks. And I'm angry. I'm hurt. I'm devastated. But we have to. We have to find that and we have to move on. And uh, it's just a, it's imperative. It's not an option. It's what we're called to do. It's not easy. It doesn't mean we have to go buy them lunch and Christmas presents for the rest of our life, but it means that I have to let it go. I have to forgive them. And, uh, and it takes sometimes every ounce of energy we have to do it. But we can do it. It's not impossible. There's nothing impossible in the kingdom with the Holy Spirit's aid that's inside God's will. And God says that this has to be done. It tells us in Matthew 25, if you come to the altar to pray and ask for a favor, ask for God's blessing in your life, bringing a gift uh, to pay homage to God. The Bible tells us real clear. It says to leave your gift at the altar and go get right with your brother. Friends, there is no option here. This is what we're called to do. And then go get right with your brother and then come back and present your gift. So you want your prayers answered. You want to be blessed in life. Then you got to be right with the people in your life. Another scripture in John tells us that if you confess with your lips, saying with your heart, praise God, love God, you, you confess this to everybody, I love Jesus, but you hate your brother, you're a liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. So you can't say you love God and then and, and hate somebody else or not love somebody else or have enemies. It's a total disconnect. It's a total disconnect. So it's not possible. So if you're doing that, quit lying to yourself. If you truly love God, if you truly love Jesus, then you're going to be obedient to what God says, not out of self-sacrificial love, but out of total obedience. You're going to do what God tells you, which he says to go forgive your enemies and go pray for them and love them. And man, that's hard. But if you're going to be obedient, then we just got to go do it. But you can do it. I can do it. We can do it together. We need each other. We got the aid of the Holy Spirit. We can do this. You can do this. So make it happen. It's going to make a huge difference in your life, your attitude, your reflection, your connection with the Lord. It's going to improve all those things. So go make it happen, friends. I'm praying for you, but you can do this.